If you are experiencing pain in your face in either the forehead region or the cheek region or in the lower jaw region, you may be having trigeminal neuralgia. If you have seen our previous videos on trigeminal neuralgia, here's something new for you that's more educational, conversational, based on what patients have given us feedback and the questions that most often appear on their minds. Namaste. I'm Dr. Malati Panchavag. I'm a consultant anesthesiologist and a perioperative physician at the MVD Center, Pune. We've been working in this field of trigeminal neuralgia for the last 30 years. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're talking about trigeminal neuralgia, a severe facial pain condition that is so poorly understood. Trigeminal neuralgia or TN is characterized by sudden, sharp, severe pain in the face. It is often triggered by simple activities of daily life the characteristic of this pain is that it's electric shock like sometimes it is sharp stabbing pain or like a thousand needles being pierced at the same time sometimes patients even complain of a burning pain like sensation on parts of their face either in the upper area the middle area or the lower area this is called the v1 the v2 or the v3 division what causes the trigeminal neuralgia most often it is caused by a blood vessel which causes compression on the trigeminal nerve and this compression most often occurs behind the ear where the nerve exits from the brain stem. Occasionally, it may also be caused by a brain tumor or multiple sclerosis. There are of course other causes as well, but these comprise the most common causes which nearly about 99% of the patients have. How is trigeminal neuralgia diagnosed? At our center, we spend a lot of time getting a detailed medical history from the patient. We take the history from the relatives as well if sometimes the patient is in such severe pain that they are unable to talk. The relatives also give us very important feedback on what causes the pain, what brings on the pain and what takes away the pain. So there are triggering and alleviating factors. More often than not, there are very few alleviating factors and many more triggering factors. Triggering factors could be touching the face, washing the face, brushing teeth or applying makeup combing your hair even, chewing, eating, talking. Often people ask us, what did you see in our MRI? Could you see trigeminal neuralgia in the MRI? Well, trigeminal neuralgia is basically a diagnosis based on the history. The MRI just offers an explanation as to what could be the cause. And to even interpret the MRI, you need somebody who is a specialist in reading such images because quite often we find that people who are not really exposed to a high volume of trigeminal neuralgia as we are at our center miss some of the small neurovascular conflicts that may be seen on the MRI. Even the MRI is of a very special kind. These MRI images perform a detailed study of the trigeminal nerve on both sides and most of the conflicts are picked up. Occasionally, we may not be able to see anything on the MRI, but if the history of the patient suggests a very classical trigeminal neuralgia, we would still go ahead and treat this patient as trigeminal neuralgia, even though the MRI may not be suggested. Quite often, we have found that during surgery, there, ha there are compressions that are so small that were not picked up on the MRI. So, a short answer is MRI is useful, but it is not the diagnostic criteria for diagnosing trigeminal neuralgia. So what's the treatment of trigeminal neuralgia? First, when the diagnosis is made, we typically start the patient on medication. Medication belongs to the group of anticonvulsants. So basically these are medicines which reduce the electrical activity within the nerve and in fact the entire brain. They reduce the amount of pain that the patient experiences. So these are actually pain modulators. They are not painkillers in the traditional sense of the word. They help in controlling the pain but not curing trigeminal neuralgia. This is a very important differentiation that patients must understand. We have several classes of agents that are available. Some of them are started initially and others are added on depending on what the patient's needs are and how they're responding to the medication. Sometimes we start with one drug which is used two times a day. Maybe we start with lower doses 
to see how the patient tolerates those doses and of course based on the intensity of pain that the patient already has. At our center, we start the patient on a particular group of medication. Uh, we give it either once or twice a day depending on the pain that the patient has and the way they tolerate these drugs. So these patients need to keep coming back to us at regular frequency to get their doses adjusted. A neurologist too could do this job. Sometimes a second group of medication is added to the first to better control the pain. Sometimes we increase the dose from two times a day to three times a day or even four times a day. Sometimes we add a third group or a fourth group. Now having four different types of medications being taken three, four times a day is very exhausting for the patient. So at some particular point, one does need to consider whether we need to change from medication and think of an alternative treatment which is less cumbersome and less exacting on the patient. One of the problems with uh, the medication is that patients tend to forget. The forgetfulness increases. There is lack of enthusiasm to doing many things that they want to do, which is one of the side effect or consequences of this medication. And depending on the profession that the person practices, we might need to change the doses or use certain groups of drugs which may be more applicable to them. At our center, when we start patient on multiple types of medication, we monitor them for blood tests as well as look at their side effects. And based on this profile, we decide whether we need to change, we need to continue, we need to increase or decrease. So this titration is done based on how the patient's response is. So you must remember that if you are on medication for trigeminal neuralgia, you need to visit your doctor frequently and you need to be monitored through blood tests for certain parameters which you need to know that they are quite all right. So don't expect that if you take medication, you are done once and for all and everything is going to get better. Sometimes it does, but most of the times this is a naturally progressive disease. You will need higher and higher doses of medication or different types of medication added on. At a particular point, when we decide to try an alternative method of therapy, what options do we have? There are temporary options and there are permanent options. There is one permanent option really. The temporary options are injections which are given into the nerve or radio frequency lesioning or a gamma knife radiation which is done onto the nerve where it exits from the brain stem. But these like I told you they are temporary and they involve burning the nerve or destroying the nerve in some form either by injecting alcohol or by injecting a phenol kind of substance or by using radio frequency lesioning or doing what is known as a glycerol rhizotomy or using gamma knife uh, radiation. These are actually radiation which is given to the nerve. These typically last for three months to about one to two years. Beyond this, the effect of this intervention goes away and the patient again needs to look for another alternative. If the patient is fit enough because we are a high volume center and we have a large experience in dealing with trigeminal neuralgia we offer MVD surgery for suitable patients. The suitability for surgery depends on multiple medical conditions that the patient has. At our center we assess the patient based on different blood tests, based on their ability to carry out exercise, based on other different parameters we decide whether we go ahead with surgery or not, whether surgery is a suitable option for them. MVT surgery is a potentially curative option for trigeminal neuralgia and generally patients have very long term pain relief with this. So the surgery is called microvascular decompression because compression is the cause and we do a decompression. The blood vessel is the cause of the compression and we do a vascular decompression and we use a microscope to do it. That is why it is called a microvascular decompression. So MVD surgery provides relief from 
the pressure that is present on the trigeminal nerve. Many patients report significant pain relief from the facial pain that they have experienced after MVD surgery. So it is important for you to discuss with your doctor whether you are a suitable candidate for MVD surgery. Living with trigeminal neuralgia can be tough. So it's important for you to develop your own coping strategies. So these strategies could be primarily of getting support from your family and friends. Also talk to your doctor and ask if there are other people whom you can talk to who have suffered from trigeminal neuralgia or who have gone through surgery or who have gone through this painful disease over several years and to know whether they have found something useful that you may find also useful. So it's important for you to develop certain emotional coping strategies which will help you get through these pain attacks. Trigeminal neuralgia is a chronic pain syndrome which means the part of your brain which is responsible for perception of pain also changes over a period of time. If you are exposed to pain constantly for several months to several years, there is going to be a change. So getting emotional support from your family and friends is essential for you to help get through this, to be comforted when you have the pain and to get practical advice from other people who have also gone through this painful condition. Remember, you are not alone in this journey. You can talk to us or take the help of other professionals who are near you and find out how you can modify your medication to your needs, how to anticipate the side effects that are there with the medication or call us to know more about the surgery and what to expect before surgery, after surgery. We are here to help you. If you found this video helpful, do give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more videos and do let us know in the comment section if there are any particular aspects of trigeminal neuralgia you would like addressed. Thank you and Namaste.